So there's a sign that I picked up uh, last fall. Drink Atlas Special Brew. And on the bottom, you can't read it very well, but it says on sale everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if they make Atlas Brew anymore. I haven't looked that one up, or at least I don't remember looking it up. Sometimes the um, Wikipedia stories and those kind of things are pretty uh, interesting on the breweries. The brewery uh, game, of course, is, is a big dollar game used to be a lot of players then there was some regulation with um, prohibition and things changed now it's sort of going back to a whole lot of players out there in the brewery game okay so today is uh thursday day after a holiday for everybody time to pick up and get rolling again we're going to talk a little bit about uh listing today and uh, I think people sabotage themselves not because they don't know how to do the listing. It's just they don't want to do the listing. Today on The Crazy Picker Life with Wheeler, Dealer, and Banana Peeler. Welcome fellow pickers and would-be adventurers. Dealer here with the Crazy Picker Life. Thursday after a holiday edition. <laughs> We're into July. In my household, we finished up swim lessons today. We recovered from a five-mile race today. We had fireworks uh, late into the evening last night, wrapped with mosquitoes. Some of the family uh, got bit up and some didn't get as much bit up. I think everybody had a fun day yesterday. We managed to uh, get some listing and some business done. I haven't tallied the numbers for yesterday, but I know we lost a little bit of another notch on our momentum contest. Today, a uh, bunch of orders came in. I think I'm looking at 15 new ones since yesterday. Sales are, are reasonable. We're having pretty good dollar uh, sales, things going out the door. Can't complain about that. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, listing today. I've got a bunch of other things to show and do. Regular get stuff out the door, get stuff listed. I've got to keep my listing numbers up. I like to do 10 or more a day. I'm in a mindset right now to be uh, more at 20, 20 or more a day. So I'm having sort of a, a short wind sprint here. So something to think about. I'm going to start talking about it more as I get my mind rolling, maybe get some coffee in, <laughs> maybe get some food in. But let me throw this out there there's two things about listing there's the mechanics of it and streamlining your process and you know making sure you got good stuff to list all the mechanics cleaning stuff up how you take your pictures the area that you do it the tools software wise that you do it the distraction removals all that kind of stuff the mechanics of it and you can become more efficient. You can uh, you can put yourself in a uh, a state of of mechanically wise being efficient and uh, getting through the process. There's there's things you can do. My background is um, industrial engineering, which is nothing more than than problem solving. How how to get more out of less people, machinery, electronics, computers, facilities, input, output, all that kind of stuff. It takes into account all those different things in the process, right? Then there's the other side. The other side is how bad do you want to do it? How bad do you not want to do it? The mental aspect of it. Are you sabotaging yourself or are you working to remove some of those 
limitations and uh, you know get some efficiency there too so I think there's two sides to it there may be more that's just popped into my head as something to talk about today all right so let me get some things started all right so here's the first wave of uh, our main camera channels uh, items going out Let's see three uh, I don't know how many there are here <laughs> can't count above three three four five six seven eight nine and then this one I wanted to show somebody ordered all these uh, filters to Dubai so it's an international order we have to fix the shipping on that shipping came through is $94 and so we're gonna have to adjust that uh, these are all good filters so there's uh, a pretty good size order there but we don't have our ABP we don't have our uh, shipping combined shipping set up I, I bet there's a way to do it there's certainly software that will do it I didn't look at them yet I'll look at them in a minute I check some of the orders over to make sure that everything's boxed good uh, we don't have combined shipping so it does it on the fly I think there are some rules and some settings and some things you can do that would require us to measure boxes and put some things in there and take some concessions internationally it's uh, for us it's tougher we explain to people we combine shipping we'll refund your money or we'll invoice you so that one uh, is a nice order but I've got to do some work on it going to D D Dubai we do send things to Dubai once in a while not very often okay uh, let me check this and then I've got a couple more orders we're at the end of a 10-day listing cycle on our camera channel so there's like 2300 items ending today that's one of the things I don't want to give up I like to list every 10 days because there's a beginning bump and an ending bump when the items are listing uh, items are ending people feel an urgency so if I go to 30 day listings which it looks like I'm gonna do we're gonna get that bump three times is less so I did hear that there's some changes back to the way they were or at least some changes back on the promotions manager it sounds to me like once you uh, reduce an item in cost you have 14 days to wait until you can list a sale but then if you run a sale I guess that doesn't mean you can't run another sale right away so I don't have it all cleared up yet I've got to play around with it I guess there's there's three things so if you run a sale does that mean you can run another sale right away if you relist an item does that count as a repricing and then an actual reduction in price does that count as a repricing so the the 14 day wait the relist the sales all that stuff seems to be changing and in limbo I'm I'm gonna have to figure it out and get my strategy I, I think I'm gonna have to relist things for 30 days I'd like to relist them for 10 days and then be able to run sales but that's the old and this is the new who knows where we're going with that okay so I'm gonna print a couple more orders we're at the end of a cycle here and uh, we had a nice uh, lens hood cell so I want to show that in a few minutes okay so let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of listing you know there's picking there's going on and buying stuff and then at some point you have that back in your shop and there's the processing of it up to the point of when you're live uh, on eBay or Amazon or whatever platform you use so there's you know there's a sorting component there there's maybe a cleanup or testing there's picturing there's uh, putting it up for sale on there there's all kinds of steps right now some of the things that I think mechanically help are to have some processes in place to uh, take care of those steps one of the biggest things you can do is batches you know maybe a batch of 10 items that you work with at a time maybe it's a batch of two items three items maybe it's a batch of a hundred items 
these are things you're going to have to experiment with depending on what you're listing, uh, depending on who you are and your space constraints. You know, if you're able to lay a whole bunch of stuff out, I think that can help. You can't just take a bunch of stuff and throw it in a pile uh, necessarily. That won't necessarily work. Certain things are onesie twosies. Uh, I used to list these exercise machines called the four minute workout, five minute workout, three minute workout. I forget what the heck they called that thing, but basically it looked like an exercise bike with a whole bunch of attachments on it and the thing retailed for like 15 grand. Well, first of all, I didn't have a bunch of those in stock at one time. And second of all, listing that was sort of like a onesie one-off thing. You know, I had to test it all. I had to clean it up. The pictures were tough because this thing was large. I mean, it was the size of a car, a small car. <laughs> it was heavy to move around. Uh, it's not like something that you carry into your light tent. I needed to do some measurements on it uh, the first time, the first couple times on on how much to charge for shipping. It turns out it was a freight item and it was even exceeding a lot of the the freight requirements. I needed to case this thing up. I needed to make a, a an actual wood enclosure, a crate. So there are one one-off items. You know, when I listed those um, enlargers, those camera enlargers, I did two at a time, but in reality I was doing them one at a time because there were so many steps in getting it up. But the point is, not every process is going to work with every kind of item. And so for me to tell you here's what you need to do is not the way about it. But batch size, I think, is something that you should look at. I also think grouping items, even though it may be a little bit more boring to list, if you have uh, softballs, and you have cameras and you have models like uh, put together car kit models you might put all those together in groups put all your softballs in one pile and you know Monday I'm gonna list those and put all your camera stuff in another pile you might have to sort it further by new old stock or boxed or camera body or lenses you know models it might be the ones that are built versus unbuilt so put like items together sometimes that works right doesn't always work again there's lots of different factors so then what you need to do is start looking at where are the slowdowns in your processing so what you know what takes me the most time what really, uh, you know, is a space constraint? What really, where are, the, where are the bottlenecks? And you start working on those and you start playing around with it. Pretty soon what you have is sort of a flexible processing managing system, which is, is sort of what we have. Um, we have space constraints now that we didn't have. I would like to have a little more space to lay things out, sort things out, take pictures, stage things. Uh, you know, we've got a pretty good surface downstairs that we lay some things out. We've got pretty good places to take pictures. We've got lots of different totes and boxes and containers and uh, things that we use to temporarily contain things between when they're purchased and when they actually get on the shelf and are, are going to go out of our office. So I've seen other people's setups. I've seen other people's shelving and I've seen other people's layouts and I've seen people's uh, photographic tents and all that things. One thing you will notice, and this changes for us because I'm getting more people involved. Once you get more people involved, like I've got banana peeler doing packing, I've got Kate uh, doing picturing and some of the the weighing and some of the dimensions and some of those things on my listings I've got uh, some of my listings some some of my listings. I still do all by myself 
Uh, Banana Peeler does some listing. Wheeler does a lot of different things uh, with listing and testing and sorting and picking. And so once you have more pieces to the puzzle, more people working with you, it gets a little more complicated. That's why I say my number one job is really director of throughput because I've got to harness all these different uh, people that are working with me and help them maximize what we have here and help the flexible thing. But one thing you will notice is people who consistently sell more, consistently list more, they have a way about going about their process. Now, uh, do we do it the best we could? No, I'm convinced that we can always improve. Do things change over time? Do the things you list change? Do um, margins change? Do you get sometimes a hundred of one item and would that change things if you had a hundred of the same item? Well, yeah, all these things change. Change is constant. And so your, your whole deal <laughs> has to be flexible. Now, if you do not have any systems in place, you need to put some. There are people way over on the, the mechanics end of it that have it super, super fine-tuned. And of course it changes and then they spend time fine-tuning. They may spend too much time on that, they may not spend enough time on it, but there are some people who really have it fine-tuned. Some people, it's, it, that's their thing, it's, it's the knack. Get, you know, get it fine-tuned, get, get all the edges square in your systems, you know, get everything perfect. Then there's people like ourselves and uh, many of you out there, you know, these people over here, by the way, they know everything about mail systems, eBay, the rules, box sizes. Uh, how to picture stuff. I mean, there are some people that are really on the ball. We're somewhere in the middle and we have flexible uh, processes. We're able to process a whole bunch of different things, I think, because of this. And we're able to maintain a productive atmosphere, but we're somewhere in the middle. We're not 100% uh, fine-tuned. We don't have everything all scoped out. I just don't put the pressure on myself for that anymore. There's a lot of pressure in being, you know, perfect pro level, nothing against it. There's just a lot of pressure to be in there. And some people can exist there for a long time. I used to exist there maybe a little bit more than I do now, just because I don't want that pressure. I've got a lot of other things in my life. Um, it's an excuse maybe, but really it's a moderation. We. We don't have to perform at 100% all the time. I'm happier with 80%, but I don't like performing at 20%. So if, you're, if your efficiency in your mechanics of your business is constantly down here, and you might know it, you might, you might know it. Some people don't know it. They don't know there's a better way. And some people do know it and they look for ways to improve and they experiment. That's good. <laughs> Some people don't know that there's a worse way and they just perform up here and they just they're they're just constantly good. <laughs> and there's some people that know a little bit too much and they fluctuate around in here, right? <laughs> I'm not saying any one of these is better, but if you are performing down here or if you think you're performing mechanically down here, there are ways to get better. A lot of it is copy other people, <laughs> copy what works. There's certain principles that work. Uh, try new things in your processes, your mechanics, and adjust and take notes and test and actually see, you know, the way we used to do it compared to now. Did it really make a difference? Sometimes short-term it does, sometimes long-term it does. But you have to test and you have to actually uh, look back and examine the results sometimes. Some people 
test on the fly and they're able to move their business from here to here as they grow or as they want to get bigger, faster, better. Some people do real serious tests and that, that'll pull you over into this group where your processes are really working great. Now when I was in my 20s, uh, didn't have as much responsibility, didn't have the idea of moderation and all that, I think I tended to try to push myself to maximize every square inch, every minute and everything like that over here. That's not as important to me anymore. Teaching my kids the difference between processes down here and here and here I think is important but ultimately for long-term survival you need to be here and this isn't bad that that's not bad you can make a good living uh, and have good days and, and, and bad days right there <laughs> but if you're constantly if your processes and your mechanics and if your place looks sort of like a mess all the time or if you just lose items all the time if there's really bad mechanics there are ways to get here you just have to want to get here and you have to you have to make some some changes some concessions try some things look for answers if you're constantly up here try not to get frustrated with us that are in the middle and try not to get frustrated with us that are down here because <laughs> we all don't want to be there it's not that we can't be there. We all don't want to be there. There's a price to pay for this. There's a price to pay for the 95% and up group of efficiency. There's a price to pay for that. If you're here, don't harm relationships. That's one thing. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at this uh, nice item that we sold. Found a good one here, huh? Yeah. So uh, the camera lens hood is sort of a shield that goes on the end of uh, a lens. I don't know if I have one here. I guess here's one that's uh, on there. Re reverse style, I believe uh, that's for storage. I believe that flips around and it keeps the uh, keeps the lens, keeps the light off the lens. So uh, lens hoods are pretty common. There's a bazillion of them. In fact, uh, I don't know if we have the lighting back here good, but we've got a lot of the common ones where we went through and listed tote upon tote upon tote of, of these. And a lot of times somebody will have a lens and they need a lens hood and we got it. <laughs> I have a lot of, uh, I, have, I have a different pricing strategy than Wheeler, so. I won't uh, comment on that. Len lens hoods, uh, interestingly enough, uh, China and other countries are making a lot of remakes. The 3D printing that's coming in is going to change the whole lens hood thing. With that said, people do want authentic lens hoods. They do want vintage uh, lens hoods. They do want the original lens hoods. And then for the higher end cameras, uh, there are expensive ones. There are also uh, rare, scarce, and off-color ones, ones that they only made a few of. Just like anything out there, there's higher-end stuff. Ooh. Camera. Camera. There we go. <laughs> Where did I go? There's always going to be high-end stuff. So this one is a Roly lens hood, I guess. Uh, this one is black in color, and not all of them were that color. This one sold for $289.99. Rare boxed. It's not even new. Somebody had one out there for, I guess, $500 for sale, and it wasn't selling. So we priced it a little more realistically at $289. So we'll, we'll take that and ship it out. Some of the camera items that I'm listing are starting to uh, trickle out a couple of days. Some days we have a few more. Here's uh, some Yankee developing uh, tanks. Made a lot, $24.99 plus shipping. Some Graflex pieces, looks like $15 plus shipping. Microscope adapter, 
$10.99 plus shipping and a quantum accessory, $40 bucks plus shipping. Most of these things I'm pricing right at market or I'm trying to be the cheapest within whatever quality uh, the items are because certainly all over the map on, on items, some items are new in box, some are uh, new in open box, some are in great shape even though they're used, some are beat up, some are broken. So you gotta, when you price things, you can't just price at the bottom because there's a lot of junk at the bottom. You have to describe it and price it where it's supposed to be. Okay, I'm gonna get these done and get my packages in and be back. All right, so I dug the things out of this uh, box. This I'm gonna dump on the table at some point. This is sort of an ugly cord box. However, some of these in here can either be lotted up and or sold individually, and some of them can be worth some pretty good money. There are cords that I can recall of one type or another that we've sold for 50 to 100 dollars that would be certainly not the average one boy this thing looks like chemicals dribbled right through it i'm going to open this thing up and see what the heck is in there but some sort of abc photo lab outfit some of those chemicals are pretty nasty got to be careful uh sort of slim pickings here i see a couple items that are going to be okay i hope to get 10 items out of this and then i'm going to lot up and or throw away the rest so let me find 10 items well i was able to find uh 10 or, or more items but i've got 10 or 11 out here surprisingly these automatic uh, tray siphons from kodak i don't know this one is near new in there i've got another one i'm going to clean up but uh they go pretty well 20 30 40 bucks depending on how long you want to wait i'll have to look this one over a little bit more but Instructions in there seems to be in good shape. The other one I just need to rinse off a little bit. It's got some stuff on it that looks like it'll come off easy. I had some other ones of these. I'm gonna try to sell a couple of these in a lot, two two for one price. And let's see, this one's a different version. These speed easels go pretty good. These are all new in package, other than that one, different sizes. They go pretty good. Actually, that one looks the same size as that. Better check it out. Well, I think they are the same thing. One's got instructions in it, so I'm going to list that separately. And here it says, let's see. I thought I saw it in there. Oh, there it is. Six popular sizes. And then they must have really been popular because here's seven popular sizes. So... They up their game. Okay, time to do something else. Hmm, maybe supper. Well, I've got, uh, I think, 11 items listed, a couple hundred dollars. I've got uh, 10 or maybe 11 more over there that I should have available to me tonight. Going to do some, already did some brainstorming with Wheeler. We're going to try to get some lenses. We've got probably four or six or eight totes of lenses we're going to take those all out on this table and spread them out and try to get all the similar ones together and let wheeler go on sort of a lens listing binge and we'll see how that goes when you do onesie twosie things it's a lot of fun but a lot of times you can't get big numbers so we got to let Wheeler do his onesie twosie thing and kind of enjoy certain camera things and play around with them. That's always good. It's really good when they're a hundred or more dollars each. But if you get down into the twenty, thirty, forty dollar range, you better be making a big, uh, big markup on that. And the key for Wheeler is to either list lots of good items, meaning thirty, forty, fifty dollars and above, or just the highest priced onesie twosie items because we have a bunch of those uh, some of them are fun because they take looking up and identification and sometimes they're you know scarce or rare or they don't come up very often those those are a lot of fun to list i enjoy that in the non-camera items as well it's quarter, it's kind of like the hunt when you find it is cool and then when you discover what it is then you start 
uh, being able to put dollar signs to it. You start uh, the idea of somebody out there wanting to buy it and then having it for use or for their collection. That's kind of like restoring an item to the right place. That's always a, a good thing and you can get paid well for that. So um, it's going okay today. Overall, I think it's going okay. We're losing ground on the momentum uh, goal. And so we're gonna try to do some things to put that back in place. Um, I'm excited regardless because we are listing and moving stuff. And in the middle of summer, that's, that's what's needed. You've gotta get yourself positioned for the fall selling season and you just got to keep moving stuff out if you have limited space or you can't buy anything else so it's all good I, I wish we were hitting our numbers I'm not sure if we'll climb back into that I hope so because I would like to uh, reward Wheeler uh, a little extra and I'd like to go on this trip in October but I've kind of already put my foot in my mouth there if we don't get it done I, I don't know if we can go I don't know if I can figure out a way. <laughs> Pretty good at figuring out ways, but you know, whatever. Might have to settle for a, uh, a weekend in uh, Goodland, Kansas, which is a town of 5,000, 50 miles away. Uh, not nearly as fun as a two week uh, multi state, you know, maybe staying on Lake Michigan and uh you know going to some fun places that's not the same is it <laughs> okay i want to wrap up my talk uh i want to kind of keep it brief on listing we talked about the mechanics a little bit and uh talked about the logistics a little bit and how you can look at that side of listing um, that's a side you can get better at. That's a side that you can quantify. That's a side that you can test and uh, you know get pretty good at it. A lot of people spend an awful lot of energy on that side, but they don't think about the other side, which is working on you or me working on me or Wheeler working on Wheeler. And that's just being efficient with your time now nobody wants to be a robot nobody wants to be glued to their computer nobody wants to like uh, be running so fast listing that you're breathing you know hard like a sprint you want it to be more of a, a, a dance I think and and a bounce <laughs> but a um, couple pointers right if you're listing, you got to be listing. So be either in it or not in it. If you're not listing, get away from the computer, unless you're doing something else. But if you're if you're in listing mode, you tell yourself, "All right, I'm going to go list my my ten items." Don't go in there and start playing video games. Don't go in there and start surfing the internet. Don't go in there and start just watching a video and go off into stare mode. I'm watching a video. Uh, I'm not listing. Now I have two monitors, right? I have something going and playing most of the time in the background on one monitor while I'm listing on the other. That doesn't mean I'm watching it. I'm glancing at it, I'm listening to it, I'm multitasking, but my most of my attention is on uh, the listing. If you find yourself sucked into the videos too much, you either need to watch something else or put some music on where you don't have the video distraction or turn it off. Now I also use headphones. I don't like some of the aspects of headphones. I have some cordless headphones. Uh, I put those on just to drown out the other noise that's in my house. If I was in a commercial office, I probably would not have headphones. I probably would just have whatever playing in the background, have some reasonable speakers. I'm not convinced headphones aren't a step down from cell phones up to your head. I really don't need to microwave my head. It's going bad quick enough. <laughs> my head's going bad quick enough. I don't need to speed that up. So anyway, that's a whole different discussion. But if you've never done research on uh, electricity, magnets, EMFs, cell phones, radiation, 
things floating in the air. If you've never done any research, you might want to do that. A lot of people have, and a lot of people know that some of those things are not that great for you, like talking on a uh, cell phone right up to your head as opposed to maybe talking to it on speakerphone. You know. Anyway, off topic. So, uh, number one, if you're going to list, list. Make that your priority. Number two, if you get into like modes where it ain't happening, take a break. Go do something else. Everybody's got other stuff to do that they're either thinking about or not getting done or whatever. Now, you can't list 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 items a day and you're doing something else all the time but if you're sitting there and you're dead in the water don't sit there for hours <laughs> you know duh <laughs> oh i don't get it sometimes you know uh some people are procrastinators some people are dreamers some people just can't get started some people just can't put one foot in front of the other. It's good to have goals. Some people need a timer. Some people need a shock collar. Some people need to eat more. Some people need to eat less. Some people need to drink beer. <laughs> Whatever you need to do, um, figure that out, you know. If you are going to do this business, obviously there's a picking, buying component. There's a back end like packaging and customer service. There's book work, there's regular business work, but listing what you have drives your business. And so there is a dedicated time that you need to be listing, preferably every day, preferably a couple hours every day focused, and you will be doing what you need to do. Doesn't matter what you're listing, doesn't matter how many listings you're doing, you need to figure out a way to uh, put some towards that solid every day. I guess it does matter. I mean, you still need, you know, if you're if you're listing flea flickers and you end up making 49 cents an hour, uh, something's wrong, right? If you're listing diamond rings and you're making $10,000 an hour, tell me where you're getting them from, right? <laughs> but somewhere in between there, you got to figure out how much you're worth per hour and then see see what kind of numbers come out of that. I did get a question about, I challenge anybody to put your net figure that you make every year out on YouTube, divided by your hours, multiplied by your shoe size. <laughs> well, that's kind of personal. I mean, there are people that uh, do better or worse. I've put out my gross sales, and obviously there's a lot of expenses, but I'm not a tax advisor. There's also a lot of expenses that are tied to your living. When I travel, I travel in style. So could I spend half of what I spent last year on my travel budget and padded my gross income? Sure. I had a lot of fun traveling. Could I um, drive a, a mini bike instead of driving my big old van? Sure. I don't know, I make as much money as I've ever made and uh, having a lot of fun, so whatever. I don't share my net numbers. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. That's all that matters, it's lifestyle too. So would I trade what I do for being in a monkey suit somewhere in an office and middle management, you know, taking that in all day long? Probably make about the same money but, you know, I don't have to wear a monkey suit. I can wear whatever I want. <laughs> so I know some people don't make much money at this. I know some people do this part-time. If you're not making much money, if you're not making as much as you think you're worth, you need to work on the mechanics of the business, the logistics of the business, what you're buying needs to be good, pick well, and list often. Keep trying to buy and list better stuff. Keep trying to find and list better stuff. On the mental aspect side of this thing, it's good to list things you enjoy, but don't fall in love with them. If you fall in love with them, you might cuddle them, and cuddling takes too much time. <laughs> it takes too much time with inanimate objects. You can cuddle with your spouse. That's probably a good idea. 
So, uh, you know, personally, there are days, and this is really all I can talk from, experience. I have some experiences working with Wheeler. You know, he's just got to work it out. Some days he lists, lists like crazy. Some days he's super efficient. Most of the time he procrastinates a little bit towards the end of the shift, end of the day, end of whatever, and then he goes into a listing tirade. He's going to have to work that out. Some days he sits there staring at the computer and gets three listings done. I don't understand that. But from my own personal experience, some days I don't feel like listing. Most days though, I am extremely productive. On those days I don't feel like listing and I'm like, all right, I ain't listing today. I do something else that has to be done. I do something else that is going to make me money in the long run. I do something else that I've been putting off. I, I force myself into something else and I weigh it. I'm like, okay, if you ain't going to list, you got three hours, you're going to tackle this. And sometimes I go listing and say, forget tackling that. <laughs> That's a good deterrent right there. So people, uh, people list because they seek pleasure, like money, like selling stuff, like reducing your death piles, come up with all kinds of exciting reasons to list. People list to avoid pain. Take your spouse and bring him to your pile and tell him this stuff ain't listed and it's worth five grand. They'll get on your case. They'll be like, all right, what do we got to do? And I'll be like, well, I just showed this to you to share it with you. And they'll be like, there ain't no share. And let's, <laughs> let's get this listed. They might even help you. So on the days I feel like listing, I go for it. I got a lot of different things pulling at me left and right and up and down and all over. But I'll sit down and do it. Now, this momentum contest is actually better for me because it forces me to get out of that 10 a day mode. 10 a day was like my my um, standby. I figure if I'm listing 10 reasonable items a day, 10 saleable items a day, um, I'm gonna make money. Now when I'm listing non-camera stuff, I would say my average item is at least $30, $40. So if I'm listing 10, 30, $40 items a day and I'm doubling or tripling my money, I'm getting a pretty good return on my time right there. And then I was packing orders and I was doing other things. Now, I'm probably up to 20 some items a day and they might be a little less in value, but I'm probably making at least 10 times my money. So if I sell something for 20, I might have two bucks in it. So it's, it's win-win, win-win-win. <laughs> All right, I don't know what else to say about listing. It's a part of this business. So if you cannot get yourself motivated to list consistently, if you can't schedule a time every day when you list, if you can't find something when you're listing to distract yourself enough so that the monotony of it is not so monotonous, you're in the wrong business. Or you need to hire somebody that loves listing. I would recommend if you hire somebody that loves listing, unless they love it so much that you can pay them hourly and make good money on that, I think commission is, is a good way to go on that. But that's just me. Pay for, pay for what you do. Now, that doesn't mean you pay them $100,000 a year. Uh, unless they're listing real quality stuff that's selling and on the other end of that you're getting a, a big return on investment. So, you know, don't give them too much of a percentage. <laughs> and usually when it sells is a good idea because otherwise you got all kinds of games that can be played. Early in the game I paid on listings only and I found out that it would take a very mature uh, person uh, on the other end to uh, report that properly to do that properly otherwise you might get 200 listings a day and they might be worth <laughs> oh my goodness i've been around the block i made all the mistakes you're gonna have to make some but you still have to list so logistically figure out how to do it better all that stuff to your business mentally personally um, you're not going to go out and run a marathon your first day but you can build up to that. You can say, all right, from 9 p.m. to midnight, that's my listing time. When I get in there at nine, everybody knows it. I gotta turn them off. I gotta turn everything else off. 
I got to get into my zone and list from 9 to midnight every day. I'm going to do this for 30 days. Take a day off. Take two days off a week. Take days off when you're out of town. After 30 days, reassess. How did that work? Am I, am I making bank? Am I making headway? How many listings am I getting done? Keep track of how many you've got a day. How many orders are starting to go out? If you're listing 12 items a day after 30 days, are you selling one item a day, two items a day, five items a day? Is that fast enough for you? Reduce your pricing a little bit. Run some more sales if you can figure that out. <laughs> uh, list more items. Find better items. It's a rolling game. It's a game you can change. It's a game that you can control. Have a list-a-thon once in a while. Once a month, list for 12 hours straight. Take breaks every hour, five minutes. Have people bring you food. Make it a party. Make it fun. We have fun sometimes. <laughs> we got to have fun more often. Fun's part of it. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about. Obviously, I think this video is going too long now. I know some of you like long videos and some of you... I don't know why you would watch if you want me to shut up. I mean, what do you want me to do? Consolidate it? It don't come out consolidated. I don't... I'm not a polished speaker. I don't do the same talk from town to town to town like Zig Ziglar for 20 years where every word is delivered. I just free flow. You got to come to my free flow, free, flow, free flow rap concert. It's a two hour concert. And you probably get 15 minutes of good rap. The other hour and 45 minutes, who knows? Might be crap. <laughs> okay, what was I going to say? Hmm, shoot. It's important. Let me turn off the camera. I don't want to waste your time. Okay, got it. So, many people are externally motivated. You know, you're outside, somebody walks by with an ice cream cone, and you're like, whoa, I got to get me one of those, and then I'm going to list. But it takes a seasoned veteran to see that ice cream go by and say, uh-uh, I'll list 10 items, then I'll get my ice cream. You need to be internally motivated to do your, your business because nobody is going to uh, expect much from you unless the bill collector starts to come. They're going to expect some money. Unless you're not making your bills, unless your spouse isn't happy, unless uh, you, know, you don't have any money to go shopping for other items because you're not selling nothing, I mean, you're, if you're a sole practicer of this eBay game, you're it. You're the last in line. You need to go from being externally motivated to internally motivated. That doesn't mean you can't put external things there to get you started. You know? Externally motivated people sometimes make good employees. Or they have to answer to, to somebody else. Until they can turn the corner and become internally motivated. I know if I don't list 20 items tonight, um, I'm not going to make as much money as I want to. I'm not going to uh, move as much inventory as I want to. I'm not going to ever dig out of this old crappy camera stuff that I love so much. I'd like to be listing the stuff that Wheeler does, but in order to do that, I would have to learn more. So there's a reward there if I did that, but I'm not as interested in that as other stuff. So. I am making a fun game of listing my old crappy camera stuff and I'm making a good living. So that's enough internally for me. I feed my family, put gas in my cars, I get to go out to eat once a week, I can buy snacks and shoes and go to races and everything else that I do. Uh oh, somebody's coming. Uh, Wheeler's getting in the game. That was Wheeler with uh, I bought a camera and lens if you recall a few days ago And I brought it in and, and he was excited about it, but now he came to tell me that it was uh, uh, Dusty and hazy and well used and kind of crappy. I paid five bucks. I don't care. I, I knew it wasn't in great shape um, Still gonna sell it for 50 60 70 whatever so he was just coming to tell me that it wasn't A quality shape. He thought it was in the box. He thought it was going to be a, 
winter winter chicken dinner but everybody understands things differently i i'm just uh i'm the throughput dude i'm the manager of throughput i just need to get it listed get it out it's the right person if somebody wants a perfect one ours ain't it somebody wants one to play with for a used price there it is five bucks sell it take all expenses out i got another 20 25 dollars in my hand then five you know new money <laughs> oh a dealer's got new money he's not living off old money like some old king in a castle he's got new money turned five into 25 30 whatever oh no here he comes again oh it's kate here to list my stuff. I better get off the horn. Okay, so list your items. Pick while list off and out. Dealer out. Out. Hey, Wheeler. Dealer production.